Hello and welcome to the first webinar about the Skip database. My name is Clara Rueda and I work at the Exposure and Supply Chain Unit here at ECA. This webinar is re relevant for those who have new obligations after the um, update of the Waste Framework Directive. But before starting, I would like to highlight the importance of this, uh, of this project, of the SKIP database project, in the circular economy context. Uh, the SKIP database will track substance of very high concern, and this is key to move forward to a circular economy plan. It will ensure that we know where these harmful uh, chemicals are in, in which products before they enter in the recycle cycle. And finally, a skip database helps make products safer. So what do you, what you can expect from today's uh, webinar? Uh, we will update you about the status of the skip database project. We will explain how the, how we are uh, developing, which will be the notification process. And we will present a demo of how to create and submit a skip notification. Please use this opportunity to ask any questions you may have. In order to do it, you can use the QA panel that you have on your screen. And if you are identifying that you have some uh, technical problems, just uh, also please send some comments so maybe we can uh, help you to fix it. Send the questions at any time. We will, we will be here until 13 Helsinki time. Uh, we will focus mainly on the scope of the presentations. And if you find out that your answer is not, uh, if, sorry, if your question has not been answered during this webinar, please send it to us later on through the ECA contact form. Uh, please note that we will be answering publicly. So if you have any confidential question, please send them us through the ECA contact form. All the video recording and presentations will be pu uh, published uh, in our webpage, in the ECA webpage. So let's uh, take a look on the agenda. After this short introduction, my colleague Telmo will uh, make a presentation about the project status and the information requirements. My colleague uh, Tommy will uh, make a presentation about the SKIP notification process. And then I will present a demo of how to create and submit a SKIP notification and provide some concluding remarks. Let's uh, start with the first presentation. So uh, I leave the floor to my colleague Telmo Vieira Perceres. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Telmo Vieira Perceres, and I work in the Exposure and Supply Chain Unit here at ECA. And today I will introduce the SKIP database, showing where we are in the development of the database and introduce you to the information requirements. So first, let's answer to the question, what is the SKIP database? So the SKIP database is a database of information on substance of very high concern in articles, as such, as such or in complex subjects. So an article is an object which during production is given a special shape, surface, surface or design, which determines its function to a greater degree than does its chemical composition. So for example, an O-ring, a wire, a bolt or a, a packaging bag are articles under reach. At the same time, many uh, components of a complex object are also articles. For example, the components of a, a bike are articles. The, the SKIP database uh, was established under the Waste Framework Directive and ensures that information about substance of very high concern is available, available throughout the whole life cycle of products and materials, including at the waste stage. The database also aims at reducing the presence of hazards of this hazard substance in waste and promote their substitution by safer, safer alternatives in the production of articles. So 
you can find more information on the dedicated uh, on the skip database on the dedicated uh, skip the uh, skip skip database web page on the ECHA's website. So now, where we are now in the development of uh, development of the skip database. So as probably you already know, the skip prototype uh, was released on the 17th of February of 2020. This prototype allows companies to get familiar with the tools to prepare and submit the skip notification. So you can now test the submission tools and the tools to prepare your notification. So we uh, invite you to uh, use the skip prototype to get familiar and then to provide feedback and help us to improve the final skip version. It is uh, important to uh, highlight that the submitted data uh, through the skip prototype will be considered test data and it will be deleted before the October of 2020 final release of the skip database. So the, the skip database will be, the final skip database will be released on October, is planned to be released on October 2020, and it will be then open to receive data to fulfill the, your legal obligations. However, your obligation only starts on the 5th of January of 2021 at the time that you are supplying articles and products that contains the candidate list substance. We are now working on approaches to further simplifying the data submission and to support the industry in facilitating their, uh, their work. The skip prototype already allows third parties to submit data on your company's behalf based on inter-party -party arrangements. So you now can, for example, uh, in include foreign users that could have access to your legal uh, entity or your company account in order to submit skip notifications. So this is uh, uh, very useful for, for example, uh, uh, companies within a group where a mother company could submit skip notifications on behalf of the daughter companies. We are also uh, working on uh, uh, defining uh, another approaches in order that you can reuse the data already submitted by your suppliers. So these approaches are based on uh, a, an identifier that it will pro provide to you by ECA. Uh, for instance, during the, uh, in the submission report, of your notification. So if uh, one of the approaches is the simplified notification. So for example, if an article is not changed, so if you are not if you are supplying an article that you receive and you don't not change it and then you supply it to your customers, you can benefit from this uh, uh, simplified notification by just referring to the data submitter by your supplier. So this is particularly important to uh, or useful for distributors because you can use this uh, uh, simplified notification with, without the need to prepare a dossier. We are also working on uh, an approach which we called referencing, where if an article that is already, if you receive an article that you that is already being notified by uh, one of your suppliers, and then you are incorporating it in a complex object, like for instance, if you are an assembler of this complex object, and you incorporate the article that it was supplied to you, then you can just refer to the submitted data without re-entering it if your supplier provides you with this uh, uh, identifier that will be provided to him during the submission of his, of, uh, his or her notification. So all these uh, approaches will be based 
or will be done via alphanumeric identifier provided by ECA. During this year, ECA is also analyzing how to make the data available to waste operators and consumers. At this point in time, it, ECA is still exploring uh, with uh, uh, exploring the needs of waste operators in order to better understand how they could use the um, how they could use the skip data to uh, improve their current practices and uh, to you to uh, pro to foster the use of waste as a resource. So who has the duty to submit a skip notification? So if you are a supplier of articles containing a candidate a substance of very high concern on the candidate list in a concentration above 0.1% weight by weight, then you need to submit a skip notification to ECA. So a supplier of articles can, are, the suppliers of articles are EU producers, importers, assemblers, and distributors. And you have your obligation to submit a skip notification starts on the 5th of January of 2021 onwards on the time that you are supplying your articles or products to your customers. However, if you are a retailer that are supplying articles uh, directly and ex exclusively to consumers, you are exempted of the skip notification. No EU suppliers don't have obligation, the obligation to submit skip notifications and they will not be allowed to submit any notification. However, they should support the importers uh, in the European Union to fulfill their regulatory obligations by submitting the skip notifications to ECA. So, the no EU suppliers should provide the necessary information to the importers in order that they can fulfill their notification obligations. So now, what information will be necessary to submit to ECA? So we can divide the sets of information, the, the information to be submitted in three main sets of information. The article identification, the safe use instructions, and the concern elements. The article identification comprises identif identifiers, the categorization based on the, uh, the function and the use of the articles or products, and its characteristics that help to identify the particular article. The safe use instructions are they are information or instructions that you need to provide in order that the uh, recipients of the articles or the use of the articles can use it safely. The concern elements are uh, consist in identifying the substance that is present on the article, uh, its concentration range in the article, and also the material, the identification of the material where the substance that you are reporting is also part of the composition of those materials that the articles, is, uh, the articles are made of. So all this information should be information already communicated under the, uh, under the communication obligation and the reach under Article 331 of REACH. And the identification of the article is already information that also accompany it, it's provided together with the article. For example, in labels, uh, in catalogs, or also in a technical specification. So going into more detail, the information, the information requirements regarding the identification of the articles, we divided, as uh, we said, in uh, identifiers, which are the article name, other names like, for example, the brand and the model, uh, the primary article identifier, so uh, alphanumeric identifiers that uh, uh, 
I inequivocally identified the article and other identifiers that you could also provide or that your article or that you assign to your article or product that you place on the market. The categorization will include the article category based, which is a way to describe your article based on its use uh, or, or better, on its function and use. And it will be based on an harmonized list that is uh, available, uh, which is the combined nomenclature or the tariff codes used for imports and exports of goods into the European Union or for exports to outside of the European Union. Then there is the production in the European flag where you can mention that uh, if your article is produced or assembled in the European Union and if you don't have the data, you can just refer that you don't have that data. Then you can provide additional characteristics like you can upload the picture, you can provide dimensions, the color and the weight, which could help uh, any user of the data in the database to search for a specific article or product. So as you can see here, the, the, uh, the attributes that are, or data fields that are identified in red are mandatory. So the, if you don't provide data, you will fail the submission of your uh, notification. The yellow are just required fields in order that you can submit successfully your notification, but you don't need to, prov to provide additional information. You can just waive or not providing additional information. It only requires an action from your side when, when submitting the, the data. And then the black uh, attributes or uh, data fields are just uh, optional. So it's just information that you, you voluntarily can provide to in, the, in your notification. However, if you are supplying articles that are intended to be, to be supplied to consumers, then you should uh, include the names or other names in order that the consumer can identify the article or the product that you are placing on the market. And if you also include uh, a numerical identifier that is, is easier, easy, it will be easier recognizable by the consumer, you can also uh, provide that information in order that the consumer can easily access to the data for the article that you are submitting the data. Now, regarding the safe use instructions, so these, as I said previously, are information or instructions in order that you need to provide to communicate in the supply chain and also to notify, to provide to ECA in order that will be uh, accessible in the uh, SCIP database. And it will be just instructions that will allow any user of the article or, or your product to use it in a safe, uh, in a safe a safety way do it to the presence of the candidate list substance in that the, in that article. You are also you can also voluntarily in, upload disassembly instructions that could be useful for uh, at the disassembling at uh, for disassemblers at the waste stage of your uh, product. Now. <clears throat> If you are uh, notifying a complex object that contains a component, uh, which is an article that contains a candidate list substance, then you need to provide the identification of your product. And then you need also to provide information for, your speci for the specific article that contains the candidate list substance. And then you need to do this for all components or articles that contain the candidate list substance. Now, if you, when you are uh, 
providing or inserting or submitting information for an article as such that you are placing on the market or an article that is a component in a complex object, then you need to identify the candidate list substance that is present in that article. You need to identify the concentration range of that substance in the article, but you could just, in this case, if you don't have more accurate data, you could just choose the from the from the list of the concentration ranges, the one that uh, uh, reflects the concentration that triggers your obligation to submit a skip notification. Then you also need to uh, provide information on the material that your article is made of that contains a candidate list substance, or if you have used a mixer uh, and you incorporated that mixer into an article during a further processing step of an article, like for example, coating an article or joining two articles together in a complex object, then you can just refer to the mixer category. And it's based on the UPCS system that is used also for uh, the Poison Center notifications. Then you can also uh, provide additional inf information about uh, the material characteristics. So additional material characteristics that will be probably useful for waste operators and can also help to better identify the material your article is made of. So if you have uh, uh, this, uh, all this information, you are ready to submit, to prepare and submit your skip not notifications. If you don't have all the information that is needed to uh, prepare and submit the skip notifications, we uh, invite you and encourage you to uh, requ to request uh, this information from your suppliers and then to start to uh, prepare your notifications and use the skip prototype to test uh, how to manage and submit the information, uh, uh, the, the skip notifications. So with this, I will end my presentation. And now uh, my colleague, Tommy Hag will uh, uh, introduce you to the skip notification process. Hello, everyone. My name is Tom Hegg and I work here in ECA in the Computational Assessment Unit. During the next minutes, I will present to you the skip notification process that we put in place uh, for the skip prototype. I will also present the system-to-system -system process that we also made available for those who need to submit data in larger amounts. In order to simplify the understanding of the notification process, uh, we cut it down into three understandable concepts. First, dossiers need to be prepared. Secondly, the dossiers need to be submitted. And thirdly, the submission process needs to be followed up and you need to receive your submission report. The dossier preparation needs to be done either manually in Euclid or then automatically uh, to be submitted system by system. My colleague Clara will later explain how to prepare a dossier in the Euclid system. The dossiers need to be submitted in the ECA submission portal, which is also accessible uh, in the Euclid ECA Cloud services. And after the submission, the submission process can be followed, and in the end, the user will be able to see their submission uh, report coming out of it. I will explain more about the system-to-system -system process a little bit later. For the dossier preparation process, there are also different options. User can choose to make the dossiers manually uh, in Euclid or to prepare them automatically out of their own systems. From, from the manual preparation procedures, there are also two different choices that the users can do. The users can choose to use the Euclid Cloud from the ECA Cloud services and prepare the notifications online. Or the users can choose to install the Euclid application into their own IT infrastructure. Inside uh, the downloadable Euclid options, you can also have it installed on your local machines or in your 
uh, network so that it can be used by more than one user. Please be aware that the prototype will only be available for download in the Euclid version of April 2020. For the system to system, the target is that the dossiers will be prepared, prepared uh, according to the harmonized Euclid format, but outside of the Euclid application. And more about this in a later slide. Then let me give you a broader overview of the Skip database. By extending our existing cloud services, we position the database into the cloud. As presented before, the duty holders can choose how they prepare their skip notification dossiers. They can either do it by preparing it online or by doing it offline in their own IT systems. The data that is uh, prepared online can be submitted automatically to the ECA submission portal, while the data which is prepared offline needs to be either uploaded and put to the IT system or then submitted automatically uh, via the system to system. Once the data has been submitted to the submission portal, it will be validated and uh, according to the same rules uh, as can also be done in the Euclid uh, validation assistant, but also based on some contextual uh, portal rules that will validate that the, con the consistency of the data submissions. All submitted data will then later on be uh, made available via the dissemination website to the waste treatment operators and to consumers for use. Now, more about the system-to-system -system process. The system-to-system -system interface has been implemented with the intention to facilitate skip submission uh, as an alternative to create and submit the skip notifications manually. It also allows the automation of skip notification processes, meaning that when there are changes into the into the products, uh, you can you can once you've in, done this investment. Uh, to build system to system, you can have this, your system submit these dossiers on its own. So system to system might be interesting for you as a company if you're in the situation that you have a lot of notifications to submit and you consider that the, the resource cost for manually entering this information and maintaining uh, overweighs the cost of the IT investment. Additionally, you need to think about the, the frequency of the update. So if you have a lot of small parts which is provided to you in your assemblies, you might need to have frequent, more frequent updates of your dossiers. One of the key things that would lead you to take the decision is if you already have an existing IT system where you have this information available. If you do not have an IT system, it might be a bigger step to figure out how to do deal with the system to system. But if you already have this information, it might be leading towards this solution. Now, if we go back to the, the definition of the skip notification process and we take it into the concept of the system to system, here uh, for the data preparation part, companies will invest in an IT investment to prepare the skip notification in the harmonized Euclid format from their existing IT systems. The submission of the dossier would be happening by interaction between the company's own IT systems and the ECAS submission portal uh, during the uh, using the predefined uh, API interfaces. The validation of the submitted dossier will happen exactly as the same way as manual uploading, but the report and the statuses can be validated via the interface APIs as well. Additionally, the users can choose to go and have a look at the uh, submissions from the submission portal. In the System to system overview that you can see on the slide, we have uh, describes that the it starts from uh, the submitting of the dossier. Once the dossier has been submitted from the from the industry, uh, the authorization is checked to make sure that the company uh, which is submitting has the right to submit the dossier. It is after the validation, uh, the dossier is submitted forward to the submission uh, services from where the polling mechanism will check uh, if the, re the response has been uh, concluded and delivered to back to industry. 
Now, how to get started with the system to system? First of all, uh, we recommend you to consult our available documentation. Put some effort in uh, figuring out how to prepare a data according to the Euclid format outside of using Euclid. Learn how to access the system to system service and learn how to use the system to system service. It's a good hint to focus first on data preparation, as this is much more complex than the data submission part of the system to system. Once you have done your data preparation and you have pre successfully prepared dossiers from your own system, then, it, then they can be validated by uploading into Euclid and just validated like that. Or you can also use the system to system uh, in test mode in order to make sure that everything you submit will be successful before you submit it for real in our systems. That concludes my presentation about the skip notification process. And I will now leave over to Clara for the demo of the preparation of the skip notification dossier. Thank you and hello everyone. My name is Clara. And in the next minutes, I'm going to give you a demo of, of how to prepare and submit a skip notification. The demo will be focused on the preparation of a notification in the Euclid Cloud and the submission of it in the submission portal. Here, you can see an overview of the process to prepare and submit a skip notification. In order to use the Euclid Cloud and the submission portal, you need to have an ECA account and subscribe to the ECA Cloud services. If you, don't, if, you don't not, if you don't have an ECA account yet, you need to create it first. Please watch our tutorial on how to create an ECA account or follow, follow the instructions on the ECA account manual. The dossier preparation process is divided in three main steps, dataset preparation, validation process, and dossier creation. Let's review these steps deeper. The first step is to prepare the data. So we will create a data set, which is a compilation of article information. Then there is a validation process step. The validation process is an automated process available to ensure basic consistency and in integrity of the data. The validation process includes two types of rules, business rules and quality rules. If the business rules are failed, the dossier will be rejected on the submission process. If the quality rules are failed, the notifier will receive a warning message to improve the quality of the dossier. Once you have compiled all needed information on the article dataset and you have validated your data, you can create a dossier. A dossier is, as, is an, a snapshot at a point in time of an article dataset so it is not editable. It's the I6Z file that can be submitted on the submission portal. As you can see in the slide, there is a preset in a step to pre-populate your list of candidate list substance in your Euclid instance by importing the pre-made candidate list reference substance package that ECA makes available in the skip tool webpage. You can find more information on how to do it on the supporting material named How to Prepare and Submit a Scheme Notification Dossier and, the, and in the specific Candidate List Package webpage. In the following slides, I will show you the scenarios that I will use during the demo. We will create a Scheme Notification Dossier of an article as such, this O-ring that you can now see on the slide with this these characteristics, and then I will also create a dossier of a complex object, for example, this card. So let's start with the demo. We will access to the ECA Cloud services through the link in the skip prototype page. You can access to the ECA Cloud services by clicking this link. If you have an ECA account, you can directly log in by entering your username and password. When you are done, click Login.
Please note, you have now access to the ECA Cloud platform. From here, you can subscribe to the ECA Cloud services made available by ECA. Please note that the first time you access to the ECA Cloud services, you have to subscribe first and read the terms and conditions. Enter on the full Euclid Cloud service by clicking on Access Service. Once you enter in the Euclid Cloud, this is the Euclid dashboard. In it, you can find different Euclid entities. The nut and bolt icon is the door to access to the article information. It includes a number on it. This number is the sum of the datasets and dossiers you have created or imported in your Euclid instance. Let's go inside. Click OK. This is the article page which contains a list of all article datasets that you have created. The first time you access it, it will be empty. By clicking on Dozier on the uh, right side of the screen, you switch to your list of created article dossiers. Let's go back to the dataset view. Each of these lines correspond to different datasets you have created or imported. This is the name of the article, and those are the primary article identifier type and value of the article. This date is the last modification date of the article dataset. From the search field, you can search in the article dataset view by name or primary article identifier type and value. Let's create our first article by clicking on New Article. Give the article a name that is meaningful to manage the article. So let's create our O ring. Then include a primary article identifier type and value. You can select the identifier type and value more adequate to the article that you want to notify. In this case, I could include a barcode. Then click on Create. And the article has been created successfully. Click on Open to enter in the dataset. This is the article dataset view. The scope of the identifier section is to provide information to allow the identification of the article. You can include as many, as many names and other identifiers as needed. For articles as such or complex objects placed on the market for consumers, at least an identifier available to consumer, like a barcode or a brand or a model, should be provided on these fields. In, in order to allow consumers to identify unequivocally the article for which information is being submitted. submitted. In this case, we can include, for example, a brand of our O ring. So let's here select as other name brand and we input we can put here rubber giants tt those this is the brand of our o-ring and then this information appears here let's move to the next section the categorization the scope of the article category field is the, ident the identification of the article as such or the complex ob object from a harmonized list based on function and use of the article. This field is really important when using this data to identify relevant waste streams that include candidate list substance. The allow values are the integrated tariff 
of the European Union, Union tariff list based on the combined nomenclature. You need to choose the article category that describes your article. We recommend to have this value in advance and search for it in the field. So in our case, we will include the following code. and then click on it, and then click out to include it. The next field requests the information about the origin of the article. Is the product produced or assembled in the EU, or is it imported? You can select different options and provide the information that you have available. Please note that as my colleague Telmo has just explained, we have identified that new options are required so this list will be updated with other options like no data available. In our case, we are going to set that the O-ring is not produced in the European Union. The next section is characteristics. You can include here the characteristics of the article you are notifying in order to help to identify the article. You can include a picture by clicking on new item clicking here and adding a picture. Or you can include some information about the diameter, the weight, the color. So let's put some data like the diameter of our O-ring and then select units. And let's put also the weight of it. and select the units. You can have also the option to include other characteristics that you may, inter you may find interesting for the notification. Next section is the save use instruction. In this section, you can include information to allow the save use information of the article you are notifying. You have different options. You can include a text, with some information to uh, support the safe use of the article. For example, a text. Uh, you can also include some disassembly instructions, but this is more useful when you are notifying complex objects. So we will say it later. And also, you have the possibility to set that no need to provide additional safe use information beyond the identification of the candidate list of sons. If you decide to select this option, you don't need to provide any additional information regarding the safe use of the, uh, regarding the, safe use of the article. The next section is the complex object component. We will use it when we uh, create the um, uh, and, and complex and complex article, Co a complex object. Sorry. So finally, let's go to the concern element section. The scope of this section is to add the candidate list that is included in the article and to identify the material where this substance is in the article. The system currently includes the candidate list version field. Recently, has been decided that this information will not be requested. We will make the appropriate change to delete this field. Right now, in order to uh, finalize this uh, dataset, I'm going to include the candidate list version I use to assess the product. Then I will select an candidate list substance. So I click on new item. And then I click on candidate list substance. The, the information about the candidate list substance included in the skip notification used the Euclid reference substance approach. 
A reference substance is an entity in Euclid that is used to define the identity of a substance in such a way that the definition may be reused in more than one location. You can create reference substance in Euclid, but we recommend you to take the ready-made skip package offered by ECHA for the skip context and import it into your Euclid instance. An update package of reference substance will be provided on ECHA website every time the official candidate list is updated. This process is independent to the Euclid format release. The reference substance are defined by pre-filled attributes that allow the search and identification of a candidate list entry and the associated members in group entries. Some of the identifiers included are substance name, its number, cast number if available, and a description. So now let's select the candidate list substance included in our O ring. So here it is. You can click on it to see the identifiers included in the um, reference substance of this candidate list. So here is the EC, not name, or the cast number. You can click save or close to get back. Then you need to report the concentration range of the candidate list substance in the article. Please note that many different options are available so you can report the level of information that you have available. In our case, I'm going to select this one, this range. Then you have to select the material category the article is made of. Please note that this information is key to identify impacted materials based waste stream. You can also provide so, you can also provide additional material characteristics. So let's add the material category. In our case, our, our ring is made by, a, by rubber and elastomer. And in these options, our article is sorry this material category we can say as, as I said we can also include some additional material categories in our case it's vulcanized In, in the case that the candidate list substance is included in the article as part of a mixture, for example, in a coating or in an adhesive, you can select the mixture category from the European Product Categorization System, EUPCs. In our case, I'm not going to select none of this because our, our um, candidate list substance is included in the materials itself. Then we have this last part of the section. So you can report that the article that you are notifying used to contain a candidate list substance and now no longer, the, the substance is no longer present or type on it. So if you later stop using the candidate list substance you are reporting right now, because you successfully substituted it for a safe alternative, you can indicate it by delete, deleting the substance in this section and then include it in this section. So it will mean that the article no longer present the candidate list substance you are adding here. After you fill the necessary information, click on save. From this view, you can have access to other fun functionalities at the dataset level by clicking these three dot buttons. 
You can export the dataset locally, so you can share it on your organization or out of it. And you can create a PDF report of the dataset. Let's go back to the article view. And here is the ORIN we have just created. There is another functionality here that I would like to explain to you. It's the clone functionality. Imagine that a notifier has two O-rings very similar, but with different candidate list substance. In this case, you can create a clone of the dataset that you have already created and then change the identifier and other information to adapt the new dataset. Let's do an example. So let's clone this O-ring. Change the name of the new clone article. So for example, I will call it 8. And open the dataset. So now you have um, the dataset pre-populated with the same information that the previous dataset. Let's change the identifiers to adapt it to the new O-ring. So for example, just make some changes on the barcode. And also, as we said, the other difference was that the, um, this O-ring have a different candidate list substance. So let's delete this one and let's select another one. Okay, so for example, this candidate list substance. And then you can save. In this way, you already have created a new data save for an article that was very similar to the previous one. Here on the left side, you can have access to the tree of your data set. So this is the ORIN and this is the candidate list substance included in this data set. So let's create a data set for a complex object. Let's create our car that contains an engine that contains an ORIN with a candidate list substance. I start to include, so let's create the new article, our car. And let's choose one of the primary article identifiers type, maybe the reference number. Click on Create and click on Open to open the dataset. As we said before, for the article as such, please include identifiers to support the identification uniquely of the um, art, uh, complex object that you are placing on the market. Let's include an article category for this complex object. Okay, so here is the one, vehicle, sidecraft, vessels. You have to select the most appropriate to the article you are notifying. Then let's include if the car has been produced in the European Union. In this case, we can set yes. And let's think in some characteristics that will be help you, helpful to identify the product. So okay, so maybe it's the color. So it's a black car. And also other characteristics, for example, the type of engine. In this case, this car would have a combustion engine. Combustion engine. Regarding the safe use instructions, maybe in this case, uh, the notifier would like to include some test of how to, to provide some safe use advice. And also could be interesting to attach some disassembling instructions. So you can click here, attach a document 
and include the information of the language of this document. Only PDF documents can be attached in this field. Finally, we get with the complex object component section. In this section, you have to include, include the link component that contains the candidate list substance. Please note that a link component can be an article as such or a complex article component. In, a, in our example, I will link an engine to the article, an engine that it's a complex object. I already created this engine. So the system provides you uh, the list of all your, the data sets that you have in your Euclid instance. So our car will have an, an engine, this combustion engine. So we click on it to add it. You have also to report the number of occurrence of this link component in your complex object. In our case, this car contains just one engine. By clicking on the link component, you can have access to the whole dataset of this link component. The identifiers selected for the engine, the article category, if it is produced or assembled in EU, if it is imported, some characteristics of the engine, for example, the weight or the engine type that is combustion, Uh, then the additional information about the safety instructions. So in this case, the notifier decides that no need to provide safe is not needed to provide additional information beyond the identification of the candidate list substance, and then include the link component that includes the uh, candidate list substance. So is the O-ring. You can open it to see the data sets of this O-ring with the identifiers, it's a similar of uh, the one that we have uh, just created, with the article category, with the characteristics, and then with the candidate list of suns that uh, is contained on the O-ring. Let's go back to the uh, complex object that set by closing or by clicking in Save. Now we have a um, fill in all the information of the um, data set of the complex object. We can just save. OK, let's get back to the article view where all our data sets are created. So here we hear the motor vehicle test 6 that we have just created. And let's move to the validation process. Once you have created your dataset, you can run a validation process whenever needed. Please note that the validation process is a voluntary process to improve the quality of your notification. From the dataset list, select the article that you want to validate. Let's validate this O-ring. Select the submission type on the left side. New submission type, skip article notification, and click on Apply. So the article notification has been added, and it is not available in your submission type list. Then click Close, and then you can click on Validate. The system allows you to include the name of the dossier that you can create after the validation assistant. So let's put the name of our own of dosher. And then click on validate. The validation assistant carries out checks according to a set of predefined rules to verify that the information was inserted as expected. The outcome of the validation is a report which lists the rules, if any, for which the validation assistant was triggered. The list of validation rules for the, for the skip notifications 
uh, it's, uh, it's available on the support section of the Skip web page. In our case, we get with a business rule that was failed. So in order to solve it, click on this link, on the link of um, where the failure is indicated. So the failure said they, they provided a car article ID identifier value in primary article identifier is not correct. A car article ID must be provided in a UU ID format. Okay, so uh, I, in this uh, that set, I select as a primary article identifier tab type and a car article ID. If uh, this uh, type is selected, you have to provide a um, value in a UUID format. So I did it wrongly. In the future, we will have a feature to create a automatically, at automatically a number on a UUID format. So in, in this case, to solve this situation, I'm going to change the primary article identifier. And then click on Save. Now that you have made the change, you can revalidate the data. So right now, there is no business rule failures detected. You can close and get back to the article that said. So now you are prepared to create your dossier. You just need to click on Create Dossier. Again, the system asks you if you want to keep or you want to change the Dossier name. We will keep it in this case and just click on Create the Dossier. The Dossier creation was complete, completed successfully. Here you can see the information about the Dossier. So is uh, the submission type is an skip article notification, the name of the dosher, the name of the um, article, and the date uh, that the dosher, the of the creation of the dosher. In the left side, you have access to the information that is included in the dosher. Okay, this is the article tree. So in order to see what the what information is included in the dataset, you can click on here. So you will have access to all the information included in the dossier, the identifiers, categorization, characteristics, safe use information, and concern elements, for example, in this case. Now your dossier is ready, is, is ready to proceed with the submission by clicking Proceed to Submission. But let's go first to see a, an overview of the submission process. The ECA Submission Portal is an online tool to submit information according to the harmonized format. The SKIP database prototype will use a specific test submission portal. All the SKIP notification submitted during the prototype period will be considered test data and will be deleted in October 2020. This submission process includes Three steps. The submission of the dossier, the validation checks done after submission, and the answer provided by the portal as a submission report. We will continue the demo by submitting the dossier we, create, we prepare on the Euclid Cloud. So we were here with a dossier of an O-ring and we click on Proceed to Submission. You will be redirected to the Submission Portal. During the Skip Database prototype period, this link will be done to the specific test Submission Portal. So here is a dossier that has been uploaded. And then we have to click here to submit the dossier. The system will assign automatically a submission number for this process. If you click on the submission number, you can enter on the submission report of the process. 
the submission report include the following information. Information about the status of the submission. There are three different status. Validation succeed status. The submission has passed the validation checks and the dossier has been forwarded to the SKIP database. The second status is the validation succeed with a warning sign. The submission has passed the validation checks with warnings and a validation report listing potential deficiencies will be available for the submitter. The final status is the validation fail. The dossier has failed the validation checks and has not been forwarded to the SKIP database. A validation report listing deficiencies is available for the submitter and a new submission must be made. Other information that you can find in this uh, submission report is the legal entity details um, that has done the submission. It includes about the submission events, when the dossier was submitted, when it passed the validation checks. Those are the timestamp events in the submission process. Information about the dossier submitted, the name of the article, the primary article identifier, the dossier name, and also information about the article. If your submission has been succeeded, uh, has the succeeded status, you have finalized the SKIP notification process. In the submission portal, you have access to all the submissions. In this page, you can view your submissions. The status, succeed or failed. The articles contained in each notification, for example, this O-ring 7 that we have created. And also, you can know if the submission is an initial submission or if it is an update submission. By clicking on the submission number, you can access again to the submission report. If the scheme notification of an article needs to be updated, you can edit the information included in the dataset of the article and create an updated dossier. This primary article identifier in the dossier needs to remain the same. This submission, the submission by the same legal entity of this updated dossier with the same primary article identifier will be received as an update of the scheme notification of this article or complex object. In the submission portal, there is also another way to submit the different scheme notifications. In this upload and submit section. So here you can drop a file to upload it to upload it. So you can export it from the Euclid instance, upload it here, and then submit it. It would be the same process that I have already explained. Okay, so be sure that you visit the skip web pages on the ICA website to know more about the skip notification to see our materials. And if you experience any problem and, uh, and, and or you identify and you want to provide us some comments, please contact us uh, through the ECA Cal Help Desk, the ECA contact form. This concludes our demo on how to prepare and submit a skip notification. Finally, in this presentation, we will provide some concluding remarks that we want you to take home. Please start preparing now. You can uh, have additional information on how to be prepared on the SKIP webpage. We recommend you to go there and to see all the material that we have put available. Get familiar with the tools that uh, are now available. Use the prototype. Start create your dossiers. You can submit it to the specific test submission environment and provide your feedback. It's really important for us to understand feedback on the tools that are right now available and also on the materials that we have provided in order to improve at them. Uh, follow the SKIP webpage for more information um, and uh, for additional things and supporting materials.
Finally, please remember that the um, ECA, ECA conference, Safe, Safer Chemicals, held in Helsinki in June, in June sorry, will have a specific training on the ESCAP notifications. Finally, uh, that was our final presentation. We, ha we hope you, ca you gain some insights of how to prepare and submit scheme notifications of articles containing candidate-less substance. The webinar will be open until 13 Helsinki time to answer all the questions. So please keep on uh, using the Q&A panel to submit your questions. If your questions are not answered, please send them to us via the ECA contact form. Thank you and uh, thank you for joining us today and see you next time.